All right. Well, cheaper gas may be good for consumers, but it's not necessarily good news for the companies that sell it to drivers and truckers across the country. I want to bring in Jimmy Haslam now. He is the CEO of Pilot Flying J, which is the largest operator of travel centers in North America. And by the way, he is also owner of the Cleveland Browns. We're going to talk a little football in a moment. But first, Jimmy, good morning and good to see you here. I understand your stores are open, but what are you seeing on the ground right now? Yeah, it's interesting. Sales, we're in about week seven of this, and sales bottomed out with gasoline being down 45 to 50 percent. And our sales yesterday, for the first time, were, quote, only down 30 percent. So over the last two or three weeks, as states have begun to gradually reopen, we have seen an improvement in gasoline traffic. Diesel traffic, however, has remained down about 17, 18 percent. And we have seen no improvement in that. The automobile business plays a huge role in the movement of freight around the United States. And until the auto plants come back to work, I think diesel traffic will remain about where it is now, could even get a little bit weaker. Jimmy, just looking through the prism of your business, uh, the convenience uh, op store operations, the gasoline, how do you think the, the U.S. economy will rebound from COVID-19? You know, we our crystal ball is no better than anybody else's, but we would we would argue toward the U-shaped recovery. I just think with business was being driven by the consumer, and I think with this large an unemployment number, I don't see things coming back very quickly. And I think it's going to be a long, slow recovery back. And I know that's what we're our senior leadership team came back to work or came back to our office this week in Knoxville, I should say, and. We've been planning for a long, tough recovery and looking at how do we do business differently going forward to account for that. You know, Jimmy, I know that uh, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway is, is a major investor in Pilot Flying J. At his uh, annual shareholder meeting, which was done virtually this past weekend, he talked about how he dumped all of his airline stocks. He's not real bullish on, on travel right now. Has he gotten in touch with your company, concerned at all about what's happening with you guys? You know, Warren really is, it, it, he really is hands off in terms of his investment in these companies. And we've talked to him once and we reached out to him just because who wouldn't want to ask Warren Buffett what he thinks, right? We talked with Greg Abel, who was uh, on stage with him too, about every other week. And anybody who runs operating businesses, and I heard the, the CEO of e &Y on before, I mean, we're, we've always been a company, let's go visit stores, let's go visit customers, et cetera. And we're looking at, we've all gotten much more comfortable in this virtual Zoom, et cetera, world. And I think we'll look at travel much differently than we did in the past. And I, well, the main thing, and I just came out of a meeting to, to do this interview, the main thing we've been asking ourselves is, what are all the activities we've been doing that clearly weren't value added? And, and I'm cautiously optimistic that we can come out of this, as will other companies, sleeker and more efficient than they've been in the past, because I think a lot of the things that we were doing probably weren't really creating as much value as we thought. So, Jimmy, uh, so the deal uh, to get, to sell uh, Pilot Flying J, the, re the other half of it to Mr. Buffett by 2023, that's still in place. Yeah, it's, here's what we did. We sold a percentage to Berkshire Hathaway in October of 17. Then in January, I should, let's just say first quarter of 23, we, we reduced our stake down to 20%. So Berkshire Hathaway will own 80 and then we'll own 20 for whatever time period we feel comfortable doing that. And we would anticipate that being a long time. Jimmy, I mentioned at the top of this interview, you are the owner of the NFL's Cleveland Browns. I think we are all ready for some football. The schedule for next season due out tonight. We are uh, we are waiting with bated breath. But what is the season going to look like as you speak with other owners and with the head of the NFL? There's talk that there won't be any any fans in the stadiums. I know teams are still selling tickets, including your own. What's it going to look like? Yeah, and then the reality is that's the most often question I get. Not what's the price of gas, what's the price of diesel, what's it, is there going to be NFL games, and, and what does it look like? 55 million people watch the draft, which is the largest it ever has, and I think everybody understands there's a huge pent-up demand to watch football. And the reality is we don't know. Um, I would be cautiously optimistic that we would have games. How many people are in the stands, we don't know, and – Things are going to remain very fluid. we got a great schedule that's going to be released tonight that I think the fans will be excited about. 
the NFL will do everything possible to make sure it has games while still balancing player safety. How important is it, uh, Jimmy, that the NFL get back to play? What would it mean, do you think, at this time in our country's history? I think you only have to look and see that the first night of the draft, I think we averaged 16 million people watching it. I think that just shows how important sports and more particularly football and the NFL to the nation's psyche. And I think with so many people having so much free time, it would be a real downer not to have football this fall. Like I was talking to one of our largest companies who runs a very large publicly held trucking company. And he said, I know you want to talk about business, but tell me first, please tell me we're going to have football this fall. And I think that's a consistent feeling amongst a lot of the people in the nation. Um, you know, I was reading up on what the schedule might look like. I know it's out tonight, but wondering if you could share a little something with us. I know the Cleveland Browns haven't played on Thanksgiving in something like 30 years. Is this the year for the Browns to do that? I don't know. We'll find out tonight at 8 o'clock. <laughs> All right. Um, what about just in, in Ohio itself for morale to bring to op to reopen the stadium again, uh, maybe to get some folks back working again? How important is it for that to happen, Jimmy? Yeah, I think really important. You know, football started in northeastern Ohio, and um, it is hugely important to that part of the world, I think to almost all the U.S., but really important. And so Canton, the Hall of Fame, is 45 minutes down the road from Cleveland. So for us to be get, get back playing, playing football games is really important. It's interesting, last Friday I was out visiting truck stops in northeastern Ohio, and I wore a mask, and so it's not you're not as easily recognizable, but some fans did recognize me and, you know, as go Browns, let's go, when are we going to start playing, et cetera. So it's important. People want to, people like sports, people like football, and it's a big deal in Northeastern Ohio. Yeah, it's a big deal across the country. Jimmy Haslam, thanks so much for your time, and, uh, and best of luck with the upcoming season. We're looking forward to it. Thank you, guys. Take care.